please welcome Daniela Navarrete. I would go to the small store around the corner with my uncle to buy tortillas. Once he paid the tortillas, he would look down at the pesos he had left on his hand to see if there was just enough to buy me a Carlos Quinto, my favorite chocolate. We had nicknames for each other. We, he would tell me that when I was a baby, I would always cry, so his nickname for me was Lani Llorona. And I called him Elio Cara de Bolillo because his face looked like a fat loaf of bread. <laughs> We would always joke around when we were together. One day, my uncle told us that he had met someone, and he wanted us to meet her, so we did. I saw her through the window of our car while my dad was parking. I didn't think she was the prettiest girl. She had thin, straight hair, brown skin, with a piercing on her nose, on her tongue, and on her lip. I grew up thinking that people with facial piercings were up to no good. This woman had three. What did this mean, that she was triple trouble? <laughs> I was scared and excited, plus I didn't have any other option. So I got out of the car and said, Tio, como estas? And we did our handshake. It was our special handshake that we shared and it was another way to let her know that we were close and if she messed with him, she was messing with me. I was a sixth grader, so I couldn't beat her up, but I knew how to make someone feel unwelcome, like the time I spit on my sister's boyfriend's motorcycle handles. So there I was, standing in front of my uncle's girlfriend. I said hi, and she gave me a hug. I introduced myself and then stood to the side, thinking that she wasn't so bad and I should give her a chance. Over time, I had created a bond with this woman. We were like besties that painted each other's nails pink and would share gossip, like the time I told her that my friend Jessica had made up her mind and decided to get back with Miguel. <laughs> She was just so sweet. She would always come for me when I cried after my mom was done screwing at me because I had accidentally pulled my sister's hair. I trusted this woman. I would tell her things that I wouldn't share with anyone else. For a while, I thought I wanted to be a hairstylist and I just wanted to practice on someone, but my sisters would never let me. But she was the only one that would let me do all sorts of crazy things to her hair. Like once, I braided all her hair. No, not a cute French braid. I'm talking about many little braids hanging everywhere. Later, we found out that she was pregnant. I was so happy when I found out that the thought of changing a dirty diaper was exciting. I just couldn't wait to play with my new baby cousin. Nine months later, Hitsemani was born. I remember when she came back from the hospital and I looked at the baby's big brown eyes. She had big red cheeks. She was just beautiful. Hetemani was more like a sister to me. This girl brought so much joy into my life. I was right next to her as she grew up. I was there for every birthday, Halloween, and Christmas. Year after year, I was there. She couldn't pronounce my name, so she would call me Nani. She was just full of laughter and kisses. I would always buy her toys with my savings. And every time I had the chance to get something for myself, I would think of her first and get her something instead. You'd always see me spending the weekend at their house so I could spend more time with all of them. It was her fourth, it was her third birthday. She was blowing out the candles on top of her Minnie Mouse cake in her red puffy dress. Everything was fine. We were all happy, or at least I thought we were all happy. A few months after, my uncle and his girlfriend started having problems, and that anger she, has, she had was taken out by not letting us see my cousin every time we visited. She did this week after week. We would get to the house and they were on their way out. My cousin's watery eyes would look at me. She wouldn't give me that hug that I knew she wanted to give me. So she would look at her mom and keep walking with her head down. The next weekend, we went to visit my uncle again. They walked past us looking the opposite direction as we made our way to the door. This time was different. This time, they had bags with them. I look back as they walk past us and I see a white car pull up at the sidewalk. And that last time I looked in, into Hitsemani's big, beautiful eyes was before that white door was closed. Thank you. Daniela Neverat. And welcome, Daniel Ariola. 